Welcome back to part 25 of building the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to continue working on the episode tab, particularly making this look nicer because it's a little ugly at the moment. So before we jump into things, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. Something like 80% of viewers actively watch every video, but don't subscribe for some odd reason. So definitely hit subscribe it means a lot and let's continue. So. We had put together this episode list view in the previous uh, two videos, basically, where we copy and pasted it from the uh, character list view. Now, we have this two column grid and it's kind of ugly for a variety of reasons. A, it just kind of looks like we slapped it together and B, the text is all cut off. So what we're going to do in this video is we are going to change the layout. And in this particular case, the episodes list views uh, view model is actually responsible for laying this out. If we come into here and look for the function collection view size for item, we're going to change this. So I'm going to say this is going to be instead of bounds.width divided by 2, we'll just go ahead and say bounds.width divided by 20 since we'll have 10 points on each side and I want this cell to go all the way across the screen. Now I want the height of each of these maybe to be fixed. So let's try, uh, instead of multiplying this by 80% of the width, let's try a fixed height of maybe 100. And let's go ahead and before we run it, we have specified section insets in the actual view itself. So let me jump over here and on this collection views layout, Let's make the left inset 10 and the right 10 as well. It looks like they already are. So now let's give it a run and see if it looks any better. All right, so I don't know what the heck I did here, but this looks obnoxious. So let's see what I screwed up here because something is totally not correct. So let's come back to the view model here. And what I'm looking for is the car or episode list view model actually. And I think I just changed it in here. Yep, I did in fact change it in here. We want this to be the uh, bounds width minus 20. So the bounds is the entire screen's bounds. And let's actually make this the collection views bound since we do have that as an inbound argument. We don't want these parentheses here. Oh, it's because I'm multiplying this by 100. I just want it to be a fixed point um, size, so 100 points tall. We'll come back here and now we're actually starting to look a little better. Um, maybe we also want like variable colors here, right? So perhaps we also want the ability for our view model to specify a different uh, border color. So let's jump into that cell where we have actually created that episode cell. I think I put it into character details. And if we jump into this episode collection view cell, you'll see that we have a assignment here of the layers border color. Now the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am going to abstract this into its own function down here. And we're gonna say set up layer and we'll toss this in here since this function is getting a little wild we'll call setup layer up here and by default we're actually uh, just saying system blue right for the uh, border color but what we probably want to do is we probably want to actually um, get that color from the view model or at least um, you know have a default color in there so let's actually change this I'm gonna actually take this out and we're going to stick it into uh, the configure function down here and instead of assigning blue directly we are going to say this is view model dot border color and let's come into our view model and we do need to create that border color inside of here now we wanted to have a fixed uh, a fixed color a default color if you will when we start so we're going to say border color we can actually go ahead and pass in but what I'm going to go ahead and do and say this is a UI color where the default will be system blue. And of course, we want to actually retain this as a global public uh, constant. So I'll say public let border color will be of type UI color and just validate that you are importing UI kit here. Otherwise, it's going to yell at you. And if we actually compile command B to build, we shouldn't have any issues because everything should be good to go. 
So now that we've actually done this, this opens up the flexibility now for our view models that are provided by the episode uh, view model itself. So let's jump into there, the episode list view view model. And if you take a look at where we dequeue the cell, we're actually going ahead and saying configure with this cell view model. So let's find where those cell view models are created. They are actually created over here um, in the did set of the episodes collection, which is our backing model. And we should now have an option in here to pass in a border color. So let's actually figure out how we are going to pass in this border color. And what I'll actually do is I'll actually just grab a random color. So I'm going to create a collection of colors on here. So we're going to say border colors. And this is going to be, we're going to attempt to spell things correctly. This is going to be a collection of UI color. And I want some variety in here so it looks nice. So I'm just going to toss a couple in here. We'll do system blue. We'll do orange. We'll do pink, and this is in no particular order since we are going to pick out a random one from this. Just be careful that you don't uh, duplicate any of them because that'll just make things um, more likely to be that color because math. Um, so let's see, we've got seven in here. Let's do one more. Let's do, I think system mint is another cool one. Oh, there's indigo too. Let's do mint now. Okay, we'll do mint and we've got nine. That should be good enough. Now what we can do down here is we can say from the border colors, get a random element, but you'll notice this will return a collection, rather a color optional um, with the question mark here. And the reason it does that is because that's what this random element function returns. So if we get an optional, which we absolutely never should, we're gonna go ahead and just return system blue. If you're not familiar, I've used these in a few places in the product already, but these two question marks, this concept of if the left is nil, use this as a default, is known as coalescing. So if you ever hear someone say coalescing, it's a super fancy word of just use this if this is nil. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and give this a build and run and let's see if it looks any better. Alrighty, character's looking good. And cool, look at that. It actually is starting to look a little more uh, unique. So. One thing you'll notice is that when we scroll up and down, the colors won't actually change. And what I mean by that is this first one here is, I guess that's pink or red. And if we scroll up and down, it won't actually change. But if you go ahead and stop and rerun your application, because we don't have any backing you know, direct logic, every time you rerun the app, the colors will be kind of redistributed and randomized. Um, in this case, it looks like it just went crazy with the blue and purple everywhere. but. Um, I digress, this is how this works. So cool, looks like we have that crash again with uh, the range issue that we are going to fix later on, I promise that. So cool, so now that we have uh, this screen looking good, let's talk about what else we want to do because um, we have this, we have put together our character list, we don't have a location yet screen, and we don't have settings. Um, we also have yet to build out search functionality as well as the episode detail screen. So let me at least jump into this episode detail screen and let's uh, get rid of that obnoxious green color. So that's being done, I believe, in the episode detail view controller. We have a view that we put on here. Rather, we have a view model. And I don't think we actually have a view yet. We don't actually have a view in here yet. So we should create a view for this. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me open up. Um, the view folder here and let's say we have the episode detail view actually it looks like we do have this already okay cool so I'm going to say background color is system background let me actually make it red it's always helpful to have an obnoxious color when you want to make sure that it is indeed showing up we are going to use constraints once again so we are going to assign this to be false and then finally let's jump back into the episode detail view and just add this view here we can go ahead and say private, let, uh, we'll call this a detail view, will be our view like so. We'll want to go ahead and add this as a sub view, so we'll say add this sub view, and we're also going to lay it out with constraints. I'll just do it directly in this function, and we'll clean everything up and abstract it later on. So that's a running theme you're gonna hear me say. Whenever you're building something, sometimes it's just more fun to just build the thing and not worry about all like the niceties of you know, documenting everything and abstracting functions. Like at the end of the day, the most enjoyable part for me at least is just building it. So let's actually build it and uh, we'll come back and clean everything up. Hopefully, we'll see. We will, I promise. 
So let's uh, go ahead and do these anchors here. I'm not going to redundantly talk through them because we've done them a million times already. And let's come into here and just make sure we have that red screen. We in fact do. Beautiful. Um, now, one thing that I wanted to add also is we mentioned a few times that we want to go ahead and be able to filter as well as search for um, characters, episodes, our API allows us to do this. I haven't really decided how I want to enable this functionality. One thing that did come to mind is perhaps we can add like a search icon to the top right of each of these screens. And I already added the share icon here and it doesn't really do anything at the moment. So let's go ahead and add some search icons. I'm going to add one to the top right of each of these view controllers. And we are also going to add that share icon to the top right of the episode detail screen. So let's let's uh, move this. We'll say add constraints. And let's go ahead, even though I just said we're not going to abstract it right now, but I lied, I guess. We'll do this, add constraints, and I'll put that in there. And let's go ahead and add that uh, uh, bar button item. So we'll say navigation item, right bar button item will be a UI bar button item. And we're just gonna do it with one of the system items and it's called action. There's actually a few in here. Search is also in here. You can also use a custom image, but you know, having uh, the system ones that actually suit your needs is actually pretty nice because you then don't have to go looking for a uh, SF symbol or a custom image to use. So here we're gonna say did, uh, did share, which is it did tap share. And we are going to create that function down here because it is a selector. In other words, a function that's going to be called by virtue of a tap. We do need to annotate it with uh, at objc for objective C. So that will handle that. And let's see why is this yelling at me. Let me go ahead and build. Okay, the error went away. Now let me go into my other controllers and we are going to add uh, for the character location and episode, a search button. So let's create a single function. I'm just going to say add search button. And we are going to say did it tap search. We'll create this selector right below it. Alrighty. And then this here, the actual type of the item will be search. And now what we can actually do is just copy and paste this to all the other controllers. Don't forget to just call add search button at the bottom of view to load. And what I figured we'll do to actually build this out is we're going to have a uh, you know global search controller and we're going to be able to configure it on creation of what we're actually searching. Are we searching characters? Are we searching locations? Are we searching episodes? Um, and the entire assumption that I'm making here is that we can actually filter all of them. So it looks like we can filter locations. Let's just look at an example. Let's see, do they have an example? Maybe not. So it looks like we can apply these here. So if we go ahead and say uh, Rick and Morty API location, this is how you get a range of locations. But let's see if we can actually filter these. So I'm gonna copy this and it looks like we can specify a type by a given type. So let's see what types of location exists. So this is a space station. And there's also a name we can filter. And then there's dimension as well. So let's see if this actually works. We're going to go ahead and say type equals space, space, uh, station. That's not how you spell space station. Let's try that again. Space station. Okay, cool. So we actually do get... Uh, seven elements back and we get one page of elements. There's no next or previous, so it does in fact work. So that's awesome. So we got that, we can get um, episodes, we can filter those, and we can also filter characters. So now that we've got this set up, um, let's see, let me actually do one last thing and then we'll wrap up this video. We're going to create another controller in here. And this is going to be a subclass of a UI view controller. And this will be called a RM search view controller. And this is going to be the single controller that I just mentioned where we're going to provide a, you know, configuration for actually searching. So what I'll go ahead and do inside of here is we're going to create a struct right in here. And this is going to be a RM config. And I guess we're already in here. So maybe we don't need the prefix. But what we want to go ahead and do is we want to figure out what type of you know configuration is this so i'm going to go ahead and specify an enum in here called type and we can specify that we can search for either characters a episode or 
location. And then this is simply just going to be that type. And yes, you can put enums and structs inside of classes. Gets a little wild, but uh, it is totally allowed. So let's go ahead and give this a title. We'll call it search. And we will go ahead and just create a custom initializer here with a config, which will be a config defined right up above. We are going to hang on to that config. And I will do that right here. And we are going to want the required initializer with uh, NS Coder. I'll just say it is unsupported and I didn't really mention it when you hit this line which we never should it'll actually crash the app and in the debugger the console down below it'll just show uh, unsupported and then here it's just yelling at me because it wants me to call the super class initializer so now that we actually have this here we can let me just add some comments let's say we'll say configurable controller to search and I'll just stick this in one of the controllers so you guys can see an example before we focus on this later on. But when we click on the uh, search icon, what I'm gonna do is we are going to instantiate this controller with a config, which is going to be a config with a type. I think it takes a type. Let's see what I call this. This will be the type, so I'll just do this, and this is going to be character. And the reason type wasn't showing up there is because it's a nested uh, rather config wasn't showing up so we can't just do config we have to let it know where that config resides it's kind of like a namespace if you're familiar with other languages so now that we have this we can just say navigation controller and we are going to push this animated true and once again i don't want a large title so i'm going to say navigation item large title display mode is going to be never so go ahead and give that a build and run. And let me just make sure I have a color in here so it's not um, gonna give me a jittered animation. I'm gonna make this the system background and that is totally not how you spell background. Go ahead and build and run. We're gonna hit search and it opens up a new screen for search. So awesome. Now that I think about it though, one thing that we might also wanna do, and I'm kinda of making this up as I go, we kinda of might want just a search icon uh, or a search bar up here. So we'll, we'll see, but we do also have those different ways to filter out results. So the reason that I initially didn't have a search bar up here, kind of like other apps like the App Store, if you will, is because maybe here we want a search uh, bar, but in addition to that, we also want maybe you know, um, some way to filter out like types or gender, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I digress. That's enough for this video. Um, if you haven't dropped a like, drop a like down below before clicking away. Say hello in the comments. Let me know if you've had any issues. Happy to help. And uh, I'll see you in the next part.